You've probably been around the blogging world for a bit now, and you know the importance of SEO. You've read articles, watched videos, tried the things, but you're still struggling to implement some solid SEO strategies that work into your content. Well, today we're here to show you how being strategic about optimizing your content can go a long way. Hi, I'm Liz Stapleton, host of the Blogger Breakthrough Summit. It's an annual free virtual summit that takes place at the beginning of the year, but it's only available a limited time. So here on the Blogger Breakthrough Summit podcast, we share tips and tricks that our speakers share during the incredible summit. So in today's episode, you're going to be learning from Nikki over from Post, Post by Ghosts. So let's dive in. Okay, so quickly before we dive into Google Search Console, I just want to walk through what I mean by optimizing your content. So you'll notice in the slide here that we have common SEO terms. Um, essentially, what we're looking to do is make sure that each of these pieces is optimized appropriately and to the fullest extent. The more you make a point of ensuring that each of these bullet points are hit when you optimize a post, the more likelihood you'll have of it ranking. So I don't want you to just go in there and kind of willy nilly rework the content. We really want to be strategic. And so we're choosing a long tail keyword um, and we're getting it in these different pieces, but there's more to it than just putting the keywords in there. Now, if you think you already know all this and you really want to get to the Google search console part, just hang in here for two seconds because basically um, you might miss something that is important that you need to include when you're optimizing your content. So obviously your post title is going to have your keyword in it. We want to make sure that it is really catchy and that it is something that people want to click on. Uh, your post content, of course, we want to include your long tail keywords, your semantic keywords. We want to get it really rich. But one thing I want to point out is you don't ever want to just add words to add words. We're not just, you know, keyword stuffing. We're not just you know, making it longer or anything like that. We are adding rich, meaty content to ensure that the post is really, really exploring the extent of the topic as thoroughly as possible. If it is something that only takes a certain amount of words to say, and that's all there is to say about it, that's, that's fine. But if you are creating a project or if you're going through a philosophy or something, you really want to be as thorough as possible to ensure your best ranks. Um, your H2s. So these are great places to include your long tail focus keyword as well as semantic keywords. Uh, it's a think of your blog post like an outline. Your H1 is your post title. Your H2 are your section headers. And then your H3s would be your subsection headers. And I usually don't recommend going further than that. Google uses H1, H2, H3 to understand the hierarchy of your content, just like an outline. So when we're, when we're not using these things appropriately, when, you know, when we're using H3 instead of H2 because the font looks prettier, we don't want to ever do that because it really gets Google confused about the, the layout of everything. Not to mention that certain accessibility tools also understand how the content is structured because of the H1, H2, H3. So we always want to make sure we're using that in the right order really nicely, breaking out sections where appropriate, including those long tail uh, and semantic keywords. So then you also have the images in your post. One thing that's very often overlooked is your image uh, name. So we're not just talking alt tags here. We're talking of the name of the actual file. So, um, you know, including your keyword when appropriate, but, you know, you want to have it be, you know, don't make the um, name of your image too long or anything, but make sure it's a little bit descriptive. Make sure that it's really clear so that, you know, you want it to be clear enough that, you know, you have the words in there that make it easy for you to recognize what that photo is without seeing it. So that's one kind of hint, right? And then secondarily, we want to go and get our alt tags in there for every image. So we want to make sure that every alt tag is unique in every piece of content. We're never repeating the same alt tag over and over. We're including our keywords when appropriate, but not to an extreme extent, only when they actually describe what is in the image. So we're also writing our alt tags as though someone who may have trouble seeing well so that they would understand what the image is without having to see it. All right, SEO title, definitely want to make this one as catchy as possible, but really, really hone in on the keyword here. So the difference between your post title and your SEO title, your post title is kind of where you can maybe explore more like fun and add more about your personality, like make it a little longer, make it a little like 
ooh, what's this about? You know, that kind of thing. But when it comes to your SEO title, you want it to include the focus keyword um, and you want it to be very clear what this is. You know, it's a guide about this or it's a walk through here or it's a, um, you know, it's it's how to do this. It's very clear what it is. That doesn't mean you have to suck the personality out of anything um, to make your post rank. But for your SEO title, you just want to be really clear what the post is about. And then your post URL uh, you, that should be usually basically what your SEO title is. So you want to keep that. Um, it, most people say to keep it succinct, but honestly, I've seen posts with rather long URLs rank just fine. But what you really want to do is make sure those keywords are as close to the name of your, uh, blog as possible. So it's, you know, HTTPS colon backslash backslash your, you know, the name of your site. And then, um, you know, use those focus keywords up front, but make sure the URL kind of makes sense. So it should be like, you know, how to plant your spring garden or whatever, but it should be specific, include the keywords and be really clear as to what the post is about. One thing about the post URL that is really, really important is when you're going back through, and especially these posts that I'm going to show you that are in this opportunity zone, when you're going back through and looking at those, when you go ahead and go in and go buff those up and really, you know, optimize and get all these bits and pieces in place that I'm talking about right now, if that post is ranking on like page two, page three, so let's say it's not ranking well, but it's ranking, okay, but it's on the map, you absolutely don't want to change that post URL. Because even if you set up a 301 redirect to the new URL, that link juice, so to speak, really does not transfer uh, th as thoroughly as you'd like or hope from the old URL to the new URL. So this is another reason why people have to be careful, like, for example, changing their brand name or their blog name. I'm sure you've heard horror stories where, um, you know, someone changed like rebrands and essentially all their traffic tanks. And even if they set it up correctly, it's just because Google doesn't always get it. So you essentially just really want to uh, not change that, make sure you get it right out the door and uh, don't, don't mess with that because it's going to make Google confused and that could make you lose the rankings that you have. Your meta description, definitely include those keywords. Again, we're not, we're not plugging them in there just to plug them in. What we really want to do with the meta description is explore the user intent and make sure that it is explaining exactly what the post is about and making the reader go, yes, I want to click that. Now, even though Google doesn't always pull the exact meta description, it's still important for Google and for readers to understand what that post is about. So that meta description field is not something to take lightly. And then we have internal and external links. Now, this is a little bit more involved and I don't really have time to go into it all today, but you definitely want to make sure that your content is well linked, especially your internal links. Your internal links are telling Google which pieces of your content are most important. So you really want to make sure that your, that your relevant and related posts are really well interconnected within your own website. It's the best way to give your own content a nice little boost and structure so that Google understands it. Okay, hopefully this episode has helped to provide you some best practices and tips for how to help your content rank on Google. Be sure to join me next time when we explore how to find the right contact for sponsored pitches. I'll catch you then.